Hello, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. And today we're here to talk about the golden oldie, the Dell Power Edge 2950 server memory upgrade kits and how to properly load the system. Well, hey guys, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell Power Edge 2950. Uh, do us a favor and click the like and smash that subscribe if you find anything useful here today. Well, let's get started. Um, this is a, a definitely an older uh, server. It's part of the ninth generation from Dell. Uh, it's a 2U. Uh, there's several different types of chassis that you can use. So if you want a large form factor or small form factor, there are options for both. Um, there are uh, two CPUs inside. Uh, so it's a dual socket uh, motherboard. It uses a couple of different types. You can use Intel Xeon uh, 5100, 5200, 5300, all the way up to 5400 series processors. Um, there are eight DIMM slots inside. Uh, you, you can use uh, a number of different of sizes. You can go as low as a one gig, up to a two gig, a uh, four gig, or as long as you have a Gen 3, uh, you can use eight gig memory modules. Um, and the speeds, unfortunately, you're, you're really only got one, one speed that you can use, and that's 667 megahertz. Uh, so really, you're going to be looking at um, the max being 64 gigabytes using eight 8 gigs at 667 megahertz and uh, a lot of, a lot of questions that we hear or a question that we hear pretty often is uh, how do I know if my uh, 2950 is a gen 3 and that's a great question uh, it's it's uh, sometimes kind of hard to understand uh, if you look on the uh, the ear right here there will be uh, some Roman numerals it'll either be uh, it'll go like that for two it'll be just two just straight lines going down if you're not familiar with Roman numerals or it'll be three straight just lines coming down that means you have the gen 3 you need the gen 3 to use 8 gigs so uh, anyhow let's go ahead and uh, open it up I'll show you how to, to load the modules how to install them how to properly configure them and all that good stuff uh, but before we do I need to grab my ESD gear you really never want to be inside a machine uh, without ESD gear so I'll be right back all right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we're safe to open the machine and prevent it from getting electrostatic discharge. Uh, before we actually hop in, I wanted to uh, show you one thing. I went out into the um, to the memory lab and grabbed uh, an ECC registered module as well. This is the fully buffered that you're supposed to use for the 2950. And this is an ECC registered module, which you would use for the 2970. Um, and I wanted to bring it out because it's important to note um, all modules have this notch right here the key in the middle uh, that key is important because that key uh, determines uh, one which way you flip the module because if you put it in the wrong way you could damage the leads of the module you know damaging the module and needing to get a new one or you could actually damage the motherboard so uh, just as far as how you insert it that's important but it's also important because you'll notice that the ECC registered module the key is just slightly to the right which means you physically could not even install the ECC registered module inside the 2950 or vice versa you couldn't install this fully buffered module inside the um, uh, uh, the 2970. So uh, as we kind of discussed, the fully buffered FBDIM is the only module that you can use for the uh, 2950. So uh, before we get in, I just wanted to uh, to show you that and demonstrate. I think it's helpful sometimes to, to see a module uh, side by side with uh, the wrong module, just so you know uh, why it's the wrong module. So anyhow, um, how you get inside this, pretty simple. Check your latch, make sure it's set to unlock. Pop the latch open, lift the top up, pretty much like any server you've ever been inside. So, uh, now that we are in, I want to uh, point out a couple of different things. Uh, you will notice that uh, you have the back plane here, uh, which is, is uh, what all the drives are inserted, um, are connected to. You have all your fan modules. Uh, under the air baffle here, there are uh, t two CPUs and uh, all of the uh, DIMM slots. You got two hot swap power supplies back here uh, and some controllers uh, in, the, um, uh, in the back here. So anyhow, now let's go ahead and show you how to actually get to the DIMMs and to the CPUs. Uh, you can do it a couple different ways. I'll show you the way I personally like to do it. Um, I like to take this cable out um, because really, I'll show you, this is kind of on a uh, hinge right here, okay? Uh, I'm going to go and start with the cable. So I like to take the cable out and then um, there you go. Okay, so 
this was just getting stuck for some reason. So you see it's on a hinge. You could technically leave it like this, but one, it's going to block the camera that I'm showing you. Uh, but it kind of, it, it just kind of flimsy, falls back down. So I like to uh, take it just completely out. Um, and then this cable is a lot easier for me to just work around than the whole air baffle. You just need to be safe because you don't want to rip any of these cables up here or over here. So you, you do need to be gentle with it. So, uh, but now that we're in, uh, you can see that there are two CPU, CPU one and CPU two. Uh, CPU one controls the uh, the white dim slots, and CPU two controls the black dim slots. Uh, Dell has made it uh, convenient because they've labeled the uh, labeled the dim slots, and there's also uh, they're the color color colored and labeled. So if you look at the middle of the motherboard, uh, it, it points and it'll show you that this uh, first white is dim slot one. The second white is uh, white is dim slot two. This third white is dim slot three, and then the fourth white is dim slot four. That is also the start of the memory channels. So there are four memory channels total and two dims per memory channel, uh, which is important to note. So if you were only putting in uh, four modules, then you would want to make sure you put them in the four white dim slots. That would be the proper way to install and configure them. Uh, of course, with a machine like this, personally, I recommend uh, what you need to do is just max it out. Uh, that's kind of the whole point of an older machine. You can get uh, you know, eight, eight gigs for realistically probably under a hundred bucks for this machine. Um, so that's that's what I would tell you to do is uh, to get 64 gigs and just get the, the best performance that you can out of that. So on the note, I'm going to show you how to physically install them. It is very, very easy. Um, first thing uh, first that we kind of already talked about was this this notch or this key here you need to just make sure that you line it up properly because again if you put it the wrong way the notch is not in the dead center and you could easily damage something so uh, and another thing that I personally like to do is I like to make sure all my tabs are fully popped open so that way when I'm actually installing the module I'm not sitting here fumbling around and potentially drop a module and damage you know because you could easily hit you see these big old uh, resistors and capacitors and semiconductors all just sticking on the board. If you accidentally hit something, you could damage the whole board. So just being careful inside is uh, sometimes just a, a key thing to, to be wary about. So anyhow, uh, I've got it all lined up properly. I'm going to install it in the start of the first channel. And one thing I like to note too is you see the module. I'm not holding it. It's inserted. Um, it, it looks like it's it's ready to go, but really it's, it's not fully inserted, and that's a problem we hear uh, all too often uh, as a customer thinks that they have a bad module, and more often than not, it's just that the module is not fully seated. So what you want to hear is this click right here. So listen for this click. So that click uh, is letting you know that there is a there are these little notches on the side of the module and this uh, the plastic piece, the tab right here, is just clicking it into place and fully seating the module down. So that's really what you're looking for, what you want to hear uh, to make sure. So we'll do it again. I'll show you here this. So just that simple, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and load these last six up really quick for you. Okay, and just like that, we have finished um, maxing out this machine and putting in 64 uh, gigabytes total. One of the things I like to check is just to make sure all the tabs in the back are all fully inserted. That's just another, just a, a easy double check that you can do to make sure that you have everything uh, done properly and everything looks good. So just like that, uh, in a matter of you know a minute, two minutes, you can easily upgrade these. And really, like I said, you don't have to be um, you know, a, a, an experienced computer technician that's been doing this for 20 years. Let's just say you're you're at your office and you're just trying to get the most out of your server, and you know this is your server. Honestly, you could easily pop these in and and take your old ones out. All you have to do is just double check to make sure that your your system's a Gen 3. So uh, it's really just that easy. And if you need any help, you can definitely reach out uh, to our team, and we're here to to walk you through it and make sure that. Uh, that you're, you get a good experience with upgrading your machine. So now let's go ahead and put it back together. It's really simple. Uh, we're going to take these and put them back on the hinge for the air baffle. And there's just two little notches that you'll see sticking out on the fan modules. So we're going to pop it back in. Kind of hear it click in a little bit. Okay. And now it just covers it, and you even see it click back in. And then we're just going to take the cables and put them back in. Really that simple. So. Uh, it really isn't that hard to do, uh, and like I said, I feel like uh, any any person that really wanted to do this could.
figure this out uh, with the help of a video like this. So uh, now we'll just put the top back on and really we're done. That's it. So we upgraded the 2950 to 64 gigabytes. And now it is ready to have the best performance possible. So I uh, want to thank you guys. If you made it this far, do us a favor and uh, click the like and smash that subscribe. And thank you guys for stopping by. And if you need any upgrades for your 2950, uh, please reach out to sales at cloudninja.com. That's sales at cloudninja.com. And hey, thanks for stopping by. Have a great day.